In finance and the stock market, the Greek letter beta is a measure of how the price of a stock tends to move compared to the rest of the market. I'll start by showing you some charts to give you the basic idea, then we'll dive into the details to give you a complete understanding. By the end of this video, you'll be an expert. First, let's start with a stock with a beta of 1. If a stock has a beta close to 1, like Visa, for example, it means two things. First, it means that the stock price is highly correlated with the rest of the market. This means that on average, it tends to move up when the rest of the market goes up, and it moves down when the rest of the market goes down. That's correlation. A beta close to 1 also means it has about the same volatility as the rest of the market. This means that the price moves up and the price moves down are about the same size and magnitude as the rest of the market. Here's a chart showing you what I mean. The dark blue line is Visa's stock price, and the light blue line is the S&P 500 which is an index that represents the top 500 companies in the US and is generally used to represent the investment performance of the broader economy or the market. You can see that when the S&P 500 price goes up, Visa also goes up on average. And when the S&P 500 goes down, Visa goes down as well. And the price moves up and down are about the same size. So this means it has similar volatility and high correlation. It's not exact. There are times when the price moves deviate from the S&P 500 because there are company specific reasons that Visa might do worse or better than the rest of the market. And these kinds of moves are not captured by beta. So that point leads us to the more formal definition of beta. Beta represents how exposed a stock is to systematic risk or non-diversifiable risk. Now, what does this mean? It means how exposed is this company to broad economic factors that affect all companies? So going back to the Visa example, Visa processes payments. And when the broad economy is doing well, people are spending more money on their Visa cards. And so Visa makes more money. When the economy slows down, people spend less money on their Visa cards and Visa makes less money. So it makes sense that this type of company would have a beta close to one in that its stock performance would be similar to the rest of the economy. The other kind of risk is company specific risk or risk that can be diversified away by owning the stocks of multiple companies. And this type of risk is not captured by beta. So for another example, let's take Microsoft and Apple. So one company specific risk might be the quality of their computers compared to competitors. And let's say, for example, that Apple comes out with computers that are higher quality or preferred over Microsoft's computers. So Apple has higher sales, Microsoft has lower sales, and let's say that's reflected in their stock price. This kind of risk is related to the specific companies and it can be diversified away if an investor owns stock in both companies. The losses for Microsoft will be offset by the gains in Apple. On the other hand, systematic risk in this example would be if there's a recession and people decide to buy fewer computers in general from all companies. This kind of risk cannot be diversified away by owning multiple companies because all companies will have lower sales and this is the kind of risk that beta represents. So what does it mean if a stock has a beta greater than one? This means that this company has a higher exposure to this systematic risk than other companies. Let's take NVIDIA for example. And here we see a five-year beta of 1.7, which is very high. If a stock has a beta greater than one, then it still means that the stock will move in the same direction as the rest of the market, but it will be more extreme. The price moves up will be bigger and the price moves down will be bigger. So on this price chart, we see that when the S&P 500 is going up, Nvidia goes way up. And when the market comes down, the stock follows, crashing down way faster than the rest of the market. So why does this happen? Nvidia as a business makes computer chips and graphics processing units or GPUs, which are in all phones, computers, and video game systems. These kinds of products are discretionary, which means consumers buy a lot more of them during good times, but really cut back and buy a lot less of them in bad times. So for that reason, Nvidia is highly exposed to systematic risk, way more so than other types of companies. So this is the reason why it's a high beta stock and the price moves up and down are so big and extreme. Now, on the other hand, what does a beta of less than one mean? Let's take Walmart as an example. And here we see that Walmart has a beta of 0.53,
which is pretty low. And generally this means that this stock price is going to be more stable than the broader market. It's still correlated with the market, but the price moves will be less extreme. Now, if we look at the price chart, the price of Walmart actually tracks pretty closely to the S&P 500 most of the time. But there are two places on this graph that are really important where you can tell it's a low beta stock. Here, at the start of the pandemic lockdowns, the broader stock market completely crashed, but Walmart stayed very stable. It had less downside. And when the stock market recovered, Walmart stock had less upside. And so this is clearly a low beta stock. It's less volatile. In general, it moves with the market, but it is more stable. And this makes sense because Walmart sells basic household supplies and food that people need to buy no matter what's happening in the economy. Walmart might actually do better business in bad times because people are more willing to go with the cheaper or less expensive option. Now, what does a negative beta mean? This means that the asset price moves in the opposite direction to the benchmark. And for a stock, this would be extremely rare. The most common example would be a gold mining stock because sometimes the price of gold goes up when stock prices goes down. And so the stock price of gold miners would follow the price of gold. A beta of zero means that the price of the asset has zero correlation to the rest of the market. Whether the S&P 500 goes up or whether it goes down, the price of this asset would be unaffected. The best example of a zero beta asset would be cash or dollars because its value on average remains pretty stable no matter what's happening in the economy. So why is beta important? How is it used in practice? Beta can help us understand why a stock price is performing the way that it is. A stock with a high beta might do better than the rest of the market during good times, but is it actually because it's a better business or is it just more risky? It might just be that a high beta stock is highly exposed to systematic risk and investors are being rewarded during good times for taking on this risk. It's important to understand this because these kinds of stocks also have way more downside when the stock market crashes. Beta is also important because it can help investors find investments that are appropriate for their risk profile. It can give them another way to think about how to diversify their portfolio. For example, low beta stocks can be helpful for maintaining exposure to equities and stocks, even when the market is going down. It can still provide some protection in these environments. Now, by no means is beta a perfect measure of risk, and there are some downsides to using it, so let's cover those now. The biggest drawback is that beta is calculated by looking at history. It's backward looking, and it might not indicate how a stock is going to perform in the future. If something fundamentally changes about the stock or the underlying business, then the historical data might not be relevant for the future. Beta does change over time for all investments, so it's important to understand the fundamentals of the business to see if historical data is still appropriate for that investment. So to really solidify your understanding of beta, here are a couple ways to calculate beta and use it in practice. One way to calculate beta is the covariance divided by the variance method. In this method, we find the covariance between the stock and the broader market, and that's the numerator, and then we divide that by the variance of the total stock market. But you're basically measuring how do the prices of the stock and the market move together and then making an adjustment for volatility. A similar method is this formula. The beta of the investment equals the correlation between the investment and the market multiplied by the standard deviation of the investment divided by the standard deviation of the market. So for example, let's say the correlation between the stock and the market is 0.9. This is very high, one is the highest possible correlation, and the standard deviation of the stock is 2.8, the standard deviation of the market is 1.5. We can plug those numbers into the formula and find a beta of 1.68. So in this example, it would be a high beta stock similar to Nvidia that we talked about earlier in the video. The correlation is how similar do the price moves happen to each other, and the standard deviation is the level of the price moves up and down. So since the stock price has a higher standard deviation of returns than the market, it makes sense that this would be a high beta stock. Now to predict the expected value of a stock, we can use the capital asset pricing model, or the CAPM. The formula for the CAPM is that the expected return of the investment equals the risk-free rate plus beta times the market premium. And the market premium is the expected return of the overall stock market minus the risk-free rate. 
In this example, let's say the risk-free rate is 3%. Let's say this is the return of a treasury bond. Let's say the expected return of the overall stock market is 10%. This is pretty close to the history for the past 100 years. And let's use the beta from the previous example of 1.7. So again, this is a high beta stock. We'd expect the expected return of the stock to be higher than the rest of the market. We work through the math and find that the expected return of this stock is 14.9%. So again, since this is a high beta stock, this is a beta greater than one, it has a higher expected return. The trade-off is that it's riskier and so that the price of the stock would probably go down way more than the rest of the market if the market does crash. Remember to press the like button if you found this video helpful and subscribe to the channel for more videos. See you next time.